All right. Uh, when uh, did you discover this hole? Well, the hole, the hole has always been there. We've been out there for a couple of years now, and, uh, you know, the hole has been there since we've been there. It's been there since the previous owner was there, and the previous owner there was quite elderly, and I, I'd say he was there for a good 30, 40 years before we moved in. Wow. Deep in the heart of eastern Washington, there's a bizarre enigma that captures the imagination of locals. Mel's Hole, a seemingly endless pit shrouded in mystery. It all started when a guy named Mel Waters stumbled upon it, and ever since then, it's been a whirlwind of eerie discoveries and inexplicable happenings that defy logic. Scientists have even tried to get to the bottom of it by sending surveillance cameras down into its depths, but all they captured are unsettling images that leave more questions than answers. Surrounded by rumors of paranormal activity and government cover-ups, the truth about Mel's Hole remains as murky as its depths. But despite the mystery, people can't help but be drawn to its mystique. So join us as we dive headfirst into the mind-boggling story of Mel's Hole and try to uncover the secrets lurking within its dark confines. Yeah, I, uh, uh, this, this could be an apocryphal story, but one guy claims that he threw his uh, departed canine down into the hole. Oh, really? And uh, he swear. well, the story is the guy that did it swears the, the dog actually came back to him. And uh, he was like, really? Out in the remote stretches of eastern Washington, there's a mystery that got everyone talking. Tucked away amidst the serene landscape of rolling hills lies a peculiar pit that sparked endless fascination. They call it Mel's Hole, and it's become the stuff of legends, drawing in curious minds from far and wide. Denise Whitaker, a reporter from KFOR, set out on a quest to uncover the truth behind this strange phenomenon. Armed with a camera and a thirst for answers, she ventured eastward to the heart of the mystery. What she found when she lowered that camera into the depths of Mel's hole left the world stunned. This enigmatic pit sits on what's known as the Mellet property, nestled on the western slopes of Ellensburg Manistash Ridge. At first glance, it looks like any other hole in the ground, resembling a well of sorts. But unlike your typical well, this one wasn't dug for water. Over time, it became a dumping ground for all sorts of odds and ends, everything from household junk to busted up machinery and old tires found its way into its depths. But here's the kicker. No matter how much stuff got thrown in, the hole never seemed to fill up, leaving Mel, the property's owner, scratching his head and wondering how deep and mysterious this pit really was. Mel's hole began to attract attention due to some strange occurrences surrounding it. Mel observed his dogs exhibiting signs of fear and avoidance around the hole, while peculiar signals interfered with his radio whenever he approached. Adding to the intrigue, the pit seemed bottomless, sparking various stories and theories about its origins. This enigmatic chasm, famously dubbed Mel's Hole, defies conventional explanation. Measuring approximately 9 feet in diameter, it features a stone wall lining its circumference, descending roughly 15 feet into impenetrable darkness. Despite serving as a communal dumping ground for Mel Waters, his neighbors, and previous inhabitants, the absence of any sound upon disposal perplexes all who encounter it. No echoes, no indication of reaching a bottom, leaving everyone puzzled. Motivated by his insatiable curiosity and problem-solving skills, Mel Waters, a passionate angler, embarked on a quest to unravel the mysteries of the enigmatic pit. Armed with his fishing equipment, he devised a plan to fathom the true depth of the hole. Lowering a one-pound weight attached to a fishing line, Mel watched in disbelief as he unspooled an astonishing 4,500 feet without reaching the bottom, leaving the pit's profundity an unresolved enigma. Refusing to yield to the unknown, Mel altered his approach. Substituting the weight with a pack of Lifesavers candies, he hoped to detect water at the pit's depths. Yet, despite his efforts, the candy emerged dry, devoid of any moisture, prompting Mel to persist. Stringing together more fishing line, he descended further into the abyss, ultimately utilizing nearly 10,000 feet of line, equivalent to nearly two miles straight down. However, the elusive bottom remained elusive, evading discovery even after exhausting a staggering 880,000 feet of line, over 166 miles in total. The pit's secrets endured, concealed within its seemingly boundless depths. Amidst his experiments, Mel made another peculiar observation. 
His dogs exhibited an aversion to the hole, resisting any attempt to approach it. They recoiled, their reluctance evidence as they dug their paws into the ground, seemingly sensing an invisible peril lurking within. Yet, it wasn't solely the canine companions behaving oddly. An eerie silence enveloped the vicinity, devoid of the usual chirping of birds or buzzing of insects, although airborne creatures traversed the area unaffected by the anomaly below. Upon discussing these anomalies with his neighbors, Mel discovered a shared experience, each recounting similar canine reactions. One neighbor recounted a chilling encounter after grieving the loss of his beloved dog and discarding its remains into the pit. He was stunned to witness the same dog, adorned with its familiar collar, roaming the woods days later. Despite calling out to the canine, it appeared indifferent, as if transported from another realm, a scenario reminiscent of science fiction narratives. Overwhelmed by these inexplicable occurrences and the unfathomable depths of the pit, Mel found solace in an unlikely avenue, the renowned radio show Coast to Coast AM hosted by Art Bell. Renowned for its exploration of the enigmatic and paranormal, the show's broad reach and receptive audience offered a glimmer of hope for unraveling the mysteries surrounding Mel's Hole. With government involvement and deeper enigmas looming, the saga took a dark turn, poised to captivate the inquisitive minds of Coast to Coast AM listeners. On February 21, 1997, a pivotal moment unfolded in Mel's life as he made a significant decision. He chose to disclose his extraordinary tale to Art Bell, a renowned radio personality revered for his fascination with the unexplained. Initiating contact with Art, their subsequent phone conversation marked the inception of a remarkable journey. Soon after, Mel's narrative captivated audiences worldwide, sparking widespread discussion about his enigmatic discovery. As Mel shared more details about his profound encounter over several radio broadcasts, an influx of global attention ensued. Engaged listeners from diverse backgrounds offered suggestions and guidance, proposing innovative methods such as utilizing lasers or radar to penetrate the depths of the mysterious void. However, the newfound fame came at a cost. By divulging his story, Mel inadvertently attracted unwanted attention to the hole's location. The following day, his attempts to return to the site were thwarted as he encountered a barrier. His land had been seized by the United States military. Swift and ominous, Helicopters swarmed overhead, signaling the abrupt intervention of authorities keen on restricting access to the enigmatic phenomenon. Mel also noted peculiar effects the hole had on its surroundings, remarking on its impact on the natural world. While animals exhibited aversion, thriving plant life seemed to flourish in its proximity. Additionally, the electromagnetic interference disrupted conventional technology, with radios emitting strange noises and occasionally tuning into distant or historical broadcasts, transporting listeners back in time through decades-old music or sports commentary. During their initial on-air conversation, spanning an hour, Mel, stationed in Ellensburg at the time, shared insights with Art Bell. However, upon his attempt to return to his property, Mel encountered a formidable obstacle the military blockade. Despite their claim of a plane crash on his land, Mel found no evidence to support their assertion. Nevertheless, the military's presence persisted, obstructing Mel's access under the guise of investigating the alleged crash site. When Mel sought to escalate the matter, he was met by a civilian official who insinuated that his ownership of the land might be in question, issuing veiled threats of potential illegal activities on the property. Undeterred, Mel resolved to publicize the situation, only to be met with dismissive laughter and skepticism. Yet, amidst the skepticism, Art Bell and his audience remained receptive, eagerly awaiting updates on Mel's saga. In a subsequent conversation, Mel relayed a startling account reported by one of his neighbors, an ominous beam of darkness emanating from the depths of the hole, piercing the skies with an unsettling intensity, introducing a novel and disconcerting element to the unfolding mystery. Now, Mel himself hadn't laid eyes on this eerie beam of darkness, but according to Art Bell and the countless callers to his show, this corner of Washington was notorious for its strange occurrences. From UFO sightings to unexplained disappearances and bizarre happenings, the area had earned a reputation for the uncanny. As callers chimed in with their theories, the speculation ran wild. Some believed that Mel's hole set atop a ley line, an invisible channel of mystical energy said to crisscross the earth. They pondered whether the hole might serve as a portal to another realm, 
or even a different era in time. In their minds, all the debris, rubbish, discarded items, and tragically even animals tossed into the depths could end up being stacked somewhere else, in a parallel world beyond our own. One curious caller floated the idea that Mel's Hole might serve as a gateway to the Hollow Earth, an ancient notion suggesting that beneath our feet lies an entire hidden world akin to a colossal cavern. As the theories piled up, Art Bell, unable to investigate the site firsthand, turned to locals for insight. A longtime resident recalled the presence of imposing stone pillars surrounding the hole in days gone by. Concerned listeners cautioned Mel about discussing the matter on air, wary that government ears might be tuning in. Promising to return with further updates, Mel vanished into thin air. Attempts to reach him proved futile. He was nowhere to be found, leaving his phone silent and his whereabouts a mystery. Undeterred, a television crew ventured to Ellensburg to unravel the enigma firsthand but upon arrival, they found no trace of the hole. What they did stumble upon, however, were telltale signs of military activity, suggesting a clandestine government presence. It wasn't until three long years later that Mel revealed someone had offered him a staggering sum of money, $3 million annually, just to grant them access to his land. But there was a catch. He had to keep mum about it all, pack his bags, and vanish from the United States pronto, with a vow to never return. After some deliberation, Mel agreed to the terms, bidding farewell to his homeland and setting up camp in Australia for a couple of years. However, despite the allure of wealth, homesickness soon gnawed at Mel's heartstrings, tugging him back towards his family and the life he left behind. Determined to reconnect with his loved ones, Mel embarked on a daring journey back to the States, braving peril in pursuing the elusive truth lurking within the depths of the hole. Mel knew he was treading on thin ice by returning, despite the warnings echoing in his ears. But warning be damned, Mel couldn't resist the pull of home and the allure of sharing more of his tale on Art Bell's radio waves. Little did he know, his homecoming would take a turn for the bazaar. On the day slated for his radio appearance, Mel found himself aboard a bus, bound for a family visit. Suddenly, chaos erupted as a heated argument erupted among passengers, escalating to the point where law enforcement intervened. Amidst the commotion, everyone was shuffled onto another bus to resume their journeys. But Mel's journey was about to veer into the surreal. Without warning, he blacked out, consciousness slipping away like sand through his fingers. When he finally regained awareness, he found himself in a strange alley in San Francisco, disoriented and fearful. A dozen days had vanished into thin air, leaving him bewildered and shaken. His wallet vanished. His arm, aching with inexplicable pain, marked with needle punctures and remnants of IV tape. But the strangeness didn't end there. The metallic tang of blood tinged Mel's mouth as he discovered several of his back teeth missing. How on earth had this come to pass? Lost in a labyrinth of confusion, Mel grappled with the unfathomable events unfolding around him, struggling to make sense of a reality turned upside down. Mel's luck takes a nosedive from bad to worse. He never sets foot on his property again. Before he knows it, he's tangled up in legal trouble, accused of constructing unauthorized structures like houses and roads. But Mel swears up and down he's innocent. After all, it was the government who had been using his land for a solid two years. But justice isn't on Mel's side. He ends up losing everything he owns. And if that wasn't enough of a gut punch, just days after his failed attempt to reconnect with Art Bell, Mel discovers his bank account has been wiped clean. Skeptics start wagging their fingers, claiming Mel's entire saga is nothing but a tall tale. But Art Bell, ever the aficionado of the mysterious, extends an open invitation for Mel to share his story once more. And share he does. Mel drops a bombshell, revealing that a TV crew ventured out in search of his infamous hole. While they didn't find the enigmatic pit, they stumbled upon evidence suggesting significant military activity in the vicinity. Adding to the intrigue, airspace restrictions suddenly clamped down over Mel's property, expanding into an even wider no-fly zone. And then there's the bizarre digital twist. On satellite imagery websites, the area surrounding Mel's land appears as nothing more than a black void. Now, 
There are skeptics out there who speculate that Mel stumbled upon a black square online and concocted the tale about his property. But here's the kicker. That website featuring the black square didn't even pop up until a good six months after Mel's initial call to Art Bell. So there's no way he could have cribbed the idea from there. But just when you think Mel's saga couldn't possibly take a stranger turn, along comes another twist. A Native American tribe from Nevada reaches out to him. They've caught wind of Mel's bottomless pit and lo and behold, they've got one of their own they're looking into. They figure Mel might hold some clues given his own peculiar experiences. And just like that, Mel finds himself embarking on a whole new chapter, venturing off to Nevada in pursuit of yet another mystery. Before laying eyes on this new enigma, Mel finds himself in discussions with Native American elders and a group known as the Bosque, keen to ensure he's not some undercover agent for the news or the government. Once all the formalities are sorted, Mel finally gets to gaze upon this fresh abyss. And with everyone's curiosity piqued, the burning question on everyone's lips is the same. What lies at the bottom of this newfound hole? Unlike Mel's original discovery, this second void isn't nestled on Native American territory. It's situated in a public place where the Bosque people, originating from the borderlands between France and Spain, have been settling since the 1800s, herding sheep across the Nevada landscape. According to the Bosque community, this enigmatic cavity has been a fixture for centuries, possibly dating back two centuries, revered as a site of profound significance. Comparable in size to Mel's hole at roughly 9 feet in diameter, it bore a distinct appearance. Unlike its counterpart, which boasted a stone enclosure, this anomaly was encircled by an unusual metal band extending deep into its depths. But what truly set it apart was the peculiar warmth. Mel couldn't shake the eerie sensation when he inadvertently dropped a tool onto the metallic rim, only to be met with an unsettling absence of sound, almost as if the noise had vanished into thin air. Driven by curiosity, Mel and the boss community embarked on a series of experiments, lowering a bucket laden with ice into the abyss. They descended approximately 1,000 feet while preserving some ice at the surface for comparison. Upon retrieval, they made a perplexing discovery. While the surface ice had melted as expected, the ice from the depths remained unchanged, devoid of moisture and exhibiting a texture akin to salt crystals. Their attempts to melt this peculiar substance with fire yielded an even stranger outcome. Instead of liquefying, it ignited and continued to burn for an astonishingly prolonged period, enduring for months on end. They conducted several experiments, dropping various quantities of ice down the hole on multiple occasions, Sometimes, the ice melted as expected, but on other occasions, it inexplicably transformed into a peculiar, combustible substance. Then, someone from the boss group floated the idea of descending into the abyss themselves. However, the consensus swiftly deemed it as a perilous notion. Thus, they devised an alternative strategy, lowering a sheep into the depths instead. It may sound unconventional, but they indeed went through with it. Yet, the sheep exhibited a peculiar reluctance, displaying an instinctual aversion to venturing into the abyss. It was as though the animal possessed an uncanny intuition, forewarning an impending strangeness lurking within the depths. As the team cautiously lowered a box containing a sheep into the depths of the hole, aiming for a depth of 1,000 feet, an eerie stillness descended upon them. Suddenly, the rope came to an abrupt halt, and an inexplicable sensation enveloped their surroundings. A peculiar humming noise filled the air, sending shivers down their spines. Undeterred, they opted to leave the sheep submerged in the depths for a half-hour spell. Upon retrieving the box, they all appeared unchanged at first. However, upon closer inspection, a chilling discovery awaited them. The sheep lay motionless, life extinguished. Shock and trepidation gripped the team as they grappled with the gravity of the situation, sensing they were confronting something of profound significance bordering on the sacred. Drawing upon the expertise of the Bosque people, renowned for their knowledge of sheep, they made a harrowing decision to examine the creature's interior. What they unearthed was nothing short of chillingly bizarre. The sheep's insides resembled those of a cooked specimen, dominated by an ominous mass, a tumor, occupying much of the internal space. But the strangeness did not end there. The tumor exhibited a startling phenomenon. It began to stir of its own accord, defying all logic. 
In a state of disbelief, they resolved to dissect the tumor, unveiling a sight that defied comprehension. Nestled within was a creature reminiscent of a baby seal, yet markedly different. Connected to the tumor by an umbilical cord, its eyes bore an unmistakable resemblance to those of a human. Now, when this seal-like creature was discovered, it seemed to have a mind of its own. It slithered to the end of the table as if drawn by some unseen force, leaving Mel with the distinct impression that it longed to return to the depths of the hole. Despite its slimy texture and peculiar odor reminiscent of the charged air after a thunderous storm, Mel sensed a peculiar connection with the creature and gently guided it back toward the gaping maw of the abyss. For hours, they stood in silent vigil, locked in a silent exchange. Then in a moment of inexplicable decision, the creature fixed its gaze upon them one final time before plunging back into the abyss. But let's rewind a bit. Before this extraordinary encounter in Nevada, Mel was battling a grave illness. Doctors had delivered the devastating news of a severe form of throat cancer, leaving him with precious little time. However, upon his return from his otherworldly escapade, something miraculous occurred. His illness vanished, replaced by a renewed vitality that he hadn't felt in ages. Mel couldn't help but attribute his miraculous recovery to the encounter with a seal-like being. This surreal journey reshaped Mel's existence in profound ways. He had traversed realms that most could only imagine, emerging on the other side as a transformed individual. As the radio show drew to a close, a sobering warning echoed through the airwaves. While the path to Mel's enigmatic hole remained tangible and accessible, a stern admonition reverberated. Heed caution and stay away. Venturing toward the abyss could invite unforeseen and potentially perilous consequences, including the unsettling possibility of vanishing into the unknown without a trace. Fast forward a few months and Mel made a return appearance on the Coast to Coast radio show, armed with a fresh batch of mind-boggling tales, particularly about the aftermath of those bizarre experiments with the perpetually burning ice. It turns out, one of the locals from Bosque, in a bid to stave off the chill, decided to bring a chunk of this fiery ice into his cabin. Little did he know, this decision would lead to a series of unprecedented events. The fire from the ice refused to die down, persisting for months on end. But that was just the beginning of the strangeness. As the fire burned on, it seemed to suck all the moisture out of the air in the cabin, leaving everything bone dry. The poor guy living there found himself plagued with parched skin and an unquenchable thirst, with even the act of boiling water taking on a surreal twist as the steam inexplicably got sucked straight into the flames. Then, in a truly unexpected turn of events, the wood stove, fueled by this otherworldly ice, simply plummeted through the wood boards of the cabin, as if the ground itself had decided it had had enough. Instead of opting for a conventional fix, they simply patched up the hole and carried on using the eerie fire for warmth. But the saga didn't end there. Weeks later, the entire cabin disintegrated into dust, as though it had surrendered to some unseen force. When the owner returned with his brother a month later, they were met with a surreal sight. The stove now sat five feet below the ground where it once stood. It was as if the fiery ice had birthed a miniature replica of Mel's fathomless void right beneath the stove, leaving behind a smooth, uniform surface. Try as they might, they couldn't budge the stove on their own. It took the might of a massive crane to hoist it out of this newfound enigma. But the tale doesn't end there. The Bosque folks began sharing their own encounters with the mystical seal creature said to emerge from the original hole. To them, this seal was more than just a creature, it was a benevolent spirit, a gentle presence bridging them to the enigmatic energies of the abyss. They felt a profound spiritual connection transcending the bounds of ordinary understanding. And then came the birds. Vibrantly colored, they flocked around the hole, impervious to fear or harm. Their unwavering presence seemed to signal something greater, a nod or blessing from the magical seal and the arcane forces of the void. It was as if these birds, along with the seal, were characters in a grander spiritual narrative unfolding amidst the Nevada landscape. In a twist straight out of the weirdest tales, the boss group dropped a bombshell claim. They asserted that the mystical seal had somehow managed to communicate with them. But here's the kicker. It wasn't your typical chit-chat. No, it was through a series of beeps and clicks crackling over the radio waves. 
And according to the boss crew, these weren't just random noises. They were messages. They were convinced that the seal was actually talking to them, sounding the alarm about the dangers lurking within the special burning ice. It was like a warning, cautioning them against letting this icy power fall into the wrong hands. Naturally, Art Bell, the man on a mission to back up wild tales with hard evidence, wanted proof. So he asked the boss folks if they had any solid evidence of these otherworldly communications. And guess what? They claimed they did. They had recordings of every single beep, click, and message they thought they'd received from the seal. Intrigued, Art pledged to bring Mel back on the show to dig deeper into the mystery. He wanted Mel to come armed with anything he could find. Recordings, photos, videos, the whole shebang, straight from the heart of Nevada. But just when things were heating up, Mel went silent. He stopped responding to Art's messages, and then, out of nowhere, his line went dead. And that was it. No one heard a peep from him again. Five long years rolled by, and the saga of Mel's hole became one of those lingering enigmas, packed with unanswered questions and tantalizing what-ifs, a story that never quite faded into oblivion. In the history of Art Bell's legendary show, Mel's Hole stands out as one of the most captivating tales ever spun. But what can we truly confirm? Pinpointing the precise location of the hole proves to be a murky endeavor. While satellite imagery from Terra Server once revealed a mysterious blacked out zone matching Mel's description, subsequent scans by Google Earth unveil no conclusive evidence. If the military had indeed seized control of the area, as Mel asserted, they could have effortlessly concealed any trace of the enigmatic orifice. Despite fervent efforts by devoted fans and curious sleuths to uncover the truth, Mel's cryptic clues have led to dead ends. One intrepid explorer ventured to a site mirroring Mel's property depiction, complete with dilapidated structures and a purportedly matching hole, nine feet wide, encircled by a stone barrier. For a fleeting moment, online forums buzzed with speculation. Could this be the fabled Mel's hole? Alas, the bubble of excitement burst when the pit revealed itself as nothing more than an ordinary well, its bottom clearly visible. Meanwhile, Mel himself remains as enigmatic as the void he purportedly discovered. Strangely, no records corroborate his existence in the area he claimed to inhabit. Some speculate he might have adopted a pseudonym to safeguard his privacy. Yet, the most gaping void in the narrative lies in the absence of tangible evidence or photographic proof. Despite the plethora of astonishing anecdotes, not a single image has emerged to validate the existence of the hole or the peculiar occurrences attributed to it. Whenever Mel chatted with Art Bell on the airwaves, Art was always eager for some photographic evidence to back up Mel's extraordinary tales. But Mel always seemed to have a convenient excuse up his sleeve. Sometimes, he'd claim he simply forgot to snap any photos, which sounded a bit fishy. Other times, He'd insist that cameras just wouldn't cooperate near the mysterious abyss due to some mysterious interference. And then there were those occasions when Mel professed to have both snapshots and recordings, yet somehow never seemed to have them readily available. He'd promise to send them along later, but they never seemed to materialize. Despite the tantalizing stories, Mel never attempted to cash in on his extraordinary claims. He could have easily peddled all sorts of merchandise t-shirts, books, even doctor photos, and there would have been plenty of eager buyers captivated by his narrative. Some speculate that Mel's tale spiraled out of control over time, leaving him unable to keep track of his own fabrications, perhaps prompting his disappearance from the scene. Yet on the flip side, Mel remained remarkably consistent in his storytelling. For five years, he stuck to his original account, even when Art Bell probed for inconsistencies. But let's circle back to the whole itself. The notion of an endless chasm that defies collapse is quite the geological head-scratcher. It's a puzzle of epic proportions, unless, of course, this hole serves as a mystical portal to another realm altogether. But as of now, the truth remains elusive. While some believe wholeheartedly in Mel's hole, even Art Bell, a staunch aficionado of the unexplained, might have harbored doubts. Nonetheless, Art understood his audience's fascination with these spine-chilling, inexplicable stories. The legend of Mel's Hole had persisted for decades, captivating imaginations far and wide. Then, in 2017, a daring group of adventurers, still gripped by the mystery of Mel's Hole, took matters into their own hands. 
Armed with modern technology like GoPro cameras and powerful lights, they embarked on a quest to locate this fabled abyss. Their journey began with coordinates they stumbled upon online, leading them to a remote farm where they confronted what appeared to be an infinite abyss. The depth seemed unfathomable, defying comprehension. They hurled rocks into the void, straining to detect any hint of a bottom, yet the mystery only deepened. During their expedition, they sensed a presence, something or someone, observing them from a distance, casting an eerie shadow over their mission. They documented every moment on film, but an inexplicable urgency compelled them to depart before reviewing the footage. As they prepared to leave, they witness a beetle plummet into the depths, a poignant symbol of the profound, boundless enigma that continues to beckon, stirring the human imagination to ponder the secrets lying just beyond our grasp. Share your thoughts about Mel's Hole in the comments below, and be sure to give this video a thumbs up.